Hello. Welcome to Friendship Moments here at Friendship Baptist Church. Tonight, my devotional is entitled The Righteousness of God. And it comes from Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings the salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from the first to the last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You know, it kind of goes without saying that the Bible is the most popular book that's ever been written. You know, if you, if, if you just stop and think for a minute about your belief, whether you believe or you don't believe, if you're a non-believer, you say, well, I, I, I don't see any evidence of God. If you just look at the Bible itself, that's more than enough evidence right there that God exists because all of those promises that he wrote about in there have come true and he stand by them you know but it sells more copies than any, than any other book and it's uh, probably the most influential book that's ever been written and even more importantly it is the word of God and it's how we come to know him and how we come to know salvation well in this letter Paul, more clearly than anywhere else, explains to the Christian and the biblical path of salvation. By grace, through faith, is laid out against all the works of men. The gospel is the power of God for salvation. Why would Paul say that he's not ashamed of the gospel? Well, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says that he preaches not with lofty speech or wisdom, nor with any plausible words of wisdom. It is a message that the world does not consider to be wise, a message said to be foolishness to the Greeks. Paul is not ashamed of the message because the message is the power of God for salvation. You know, Paul was ridiculed a lot of times when he was preaching the gospel because of who he was and who he used to be. You know, they all knew him as Saul. As he, was the, he was being groomed, I believe, to be the, the, the high priest of the whole, the whole uh, country, and that was what he was groomed to be. And then, but then when he met Jesus, everything changed. And a lot of people just didn't, couldn't accept that. But when he said that he is not ashamed, let's, let's, let's just put that another way. Paul says, that I am proud of the gospel. You know, the power of God, not the power of man. The Greek word for power in the original text is duamis. And it's where we get our English word, dynamite. You know, when you think about dynamite, it's a very powerful thing. You know, this day and time when we think about an atomic bomb, we, we, we measure how powerful it is by dynamite. And so that's the word that Paul is using when he's explaining the power of the gospel, a very powerful word. And the gospel is not a request from God. And then we do the rest by works. It's not something that Jesus did 99% of and that we're required to do the other 1%. It is not just the good news that Jesus is here to help us in the time of need, but the gospel is the good news. That is the power of salvation. It needs no help from man. It is the announcement of what Christ accomplished on the cross when he said, it is finished. For everyone who believes, Paul says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written. The righteousness will live by faith. The gospel is not the power of God for everyone, but the power for believers. The power is entirely God's, it's not my own. And the glory earned for salvation belongs to God, not to men. This new covenant that God has made through Jesus Christ, it is a covenant made by God and kept by God. And it is the gospel of the fulfillment of the new covenant, which is the power of God for salvation. 
Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for your salvation through Jesus Christ. By your Spirit, help me to show love and compassion to others. Guide me in all my ways and watch over me and my family. Thank you, Lord, for this little church by the road, and we, that we may be always be mindful of your will for our lives. We trust you, and we believe in you, and in your holy word. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you.